Jan Ezra here. I was working on a screen cam project the other day and ran into three minor problems that all have very elegant solutions in Premiere Pro. These aren't life-changing tips, but if you experience the same problems, and sometime you will, you'll be glad you know the techniques I'm about to show you. So this is, um, this is a screen cam that I dropped into the timeline, and everything sounded good until I got to the very end, and then this is what I heard. Okay, I'm Jan Ezra. That's a preset on how to use Squeeze more efficiently. Thanks for watching. And of course, it's not a preset on how to use Squeeze. It's a tutorial, so that needed to change. Now, whenever you drop content, audio, video content, to the timeline in Premiere Pro, they're linked. So I need to get rid of the audio, but I need to keep the video. If I try to drag the audio track because they're linked, the video track gets dragged as well. Now, I could unlink the two forms of content up here. Just choose Clip, Unlink. But then you'd have to link it up again if you were going to do any further editing. The quicker solution, uh, I'm working on a Mac, is you press the Option key. And if you look at the message down here, you see, you see that the Option key overrides a link or a group. So what I'm going to do is override the link by pressing the Option key. And this would be the Alt key on Windows. And then I can drag just the audio portion of the clip. I don't need to unlink it first. And the link returns once you stop pressing the Option key or the Alt key on Windows. So that's a nice quick way to edit either the video and not the audio, or as we just did, the audio and not the video. Now, I went to Audition, recorded my clip, and here's the patch that I created. Dropped it down to the timeline, and immediately noticed, oops, I had audio in the left track, but not the right track. And obviously, if somebody's listening on a, on a stereo speaker system or headset, they would hear audio on the left and not the right. Can't have that. Things look good here. If you look at the audio meters here, you'll see audio in both channels. And then once we get here, we see audio in only one channel. Now, I could go back to Audition and re-render, uh, make sure that both tracks contain that audio. The quicker solution in Premiere is to go down to Audio Effects and then use the Fill Left filter to send audio from the left track into the right track. And if we go, again, keeping your eye on the, on the volume meters here, we press Play. That's a tutorial on how to load separate instances. Of okay, so now it's a tutorial and it's in stereo. So that's a quick fix if you have audio in only one track and, and you need the same content in the other track. Fill left fills the right track with audio from the left track, and obviously fill right fills the left track with audio from the right track. See this maybe once every two or three years, um, but every time I see it, I'm glad I know the quick solution. Okay, so let's go to the start of the project, and we'll talk about the last tip, which relates to something called nesting. Now, I originally found the benefit of nesting through this particular problem. I've got, I've got a title here, talks about what's in the video. I've got a title here, and this is the advertisement. Again, this is from my own website, so there's some promotional materials. And then on top, we have a logo. So here, the logo and the title transition in at the same time. But here, I'm transitioning on track one from the title to the opening sequence of the screen cam. So this 30 frame transition is shared between this track and this track. 15 frames here, 15 frames here. While the transition here is all 30 frames on the logo. So the logo starts to fade before the, before the title starts to fade and it's not even. Now this is, you know, it's not a major deal, but they're even here. I really wanted them even here. And there's, there's no easy way to do that. I could mess with the transition duration by dragging this, and then I can do that. But that, you know, again, that doesn't seem to produce an even result. And if you have multiple tracks above this, then you've got to do it for each track. Let me undo that. The quicker solution is to select, I'm going to drag and select all three components here, and then choose Clip Nest. And what I've done here is nest the components, the three components that we saw, into one sequence called a nested sequence. And let's go here. It's nested sequence 5. And let's call that standard, open, and close. And then if I want to see the content, I just double click it. Here's standard, open, and close. That's the nested clip. I want to remove the 
cross dissolve here, the cross dissolve here, and the cross dissolve here, and then insert one in the middle. between these two clips. And then if I go back to the main edit track, we see the transition is in there. And then I would apply, I guess the opening cross dissolve here, and then the dip to black here. And I'll have to center that. And now what I've done is get the logo fading out in time with the title clip that's underneath it. The other benefit of nested sequences is that you can reuse the content pretty easily. And this is more the classic use. Let me drag this over. And so I call this the standard opening and close because I want to use the same materials in the open as I do in the close. So to reuse this content, all I have to do is drag it down to here. And the content that was in the opening sequence is now here at the end. Obviously, I'd want to same dip to black there, center that, and then cross dissolve here at the very end to fade that out. So that's nesting, a nice convenient way to apply the same transition to multiple clips uh, stacked together on the timeline, uh, and something that's also very useful if you plan to reuse chunks of content. Overall, nothing earth shattering, but three techniques that at some point or another, hopefully you'll find useful in one of your projects. Jan Ozer here. Thanks for watching.